Today I'm going to be reviewing this Philips 800 series, which is available around the world. Now Philips is well known, respected brand that started in 1891 and at one point was the largest consumer appliance manufacturer in the world. Now it's still really big with a revenue of 18 billion euros, but interestingly the domestic appliance division that this device comes from was sold to a private equity firm in 2021, which is called Versuni. If you don't want to hear my full review, here are the five things I really like about this device and the three things I don't. The first one is it had really great air cleaning performance for a small device. It also has an auto mode which is rare on budget priced devices. It had a longer filter life than other smaller devices we've looked at. It was quieter at its top speed than many of the other devices we benchmarked and it only pulled 20 watts at full speed. What I don't like about this device, the first one is the filter doesn't have any carbon and you're unable to buy any OEM filter that provides carbon for this device. The second one is the 800i, the slightly upgraded model, you can't use the filters with this device. And finally, this device has no app support. If you want that, you need to upgrade and go for the 800i. Right, let's jump into the full review. The 800 series or the AC0820-30 is one of the cheaper devices in the range. As with all the air purifiers we test here at Housefresh, we bought this device with our own money. We went to Amazon.co.uk and paid £94.99p, but it's also available on Amazon.com for $139.99. If you've been on this channel before, you know I like to go over to the Energy Star website to see if a KDAR report exists, and I'm glad to report that the Philips device does have a KDAR score. Now it has a dust KDAR of 112 CFM, which is very similar to what we see with a device like the Lavoit Core 300, which had a dust KDAR of 129 CFM. Whilst the KDAR for this device is slightly less than the Lavoit Core 300, the efficiency of this device is much higher. So it had a dust KDAR per watt of 6.02 versus the 2.93 watts that we see with the Lavoit Core 300. This would suggest to us that this has a much more efficient fan motor. Let's look at the design of this device. It's much smaller than the other Philips device, the Philips 3000i that we've reviewed, and the design is a lot simpler. It doesn't have any of the fabric at the top of the device, and the control panel itself is much simpler. There is just one button to switch between sleep, auto mode, and the top speed. Now, because there is no onboard screen to tell you what mode you're in, or even lights to tell you what you're in, sometimes it can be a little tricky to know which mode it's in. As I mentioned earlier, there is no app support for this device. So if you want app support, you will want to upgrade for the black version of this device, the 800i, which is, seems to be the exact same device, but with app support as well. So let's look at the filter technology. Now Philips calls it Nano Protect HEPA. In their marketing material, they mention that it can stop 99.95% of particles of 0.003 microns. Now I went into detail about this on the Philips 3000 eye review, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but the simple case is that this type of achievement is not something that's unique to this type of filtration technology. You can achieve this level of filtration even with non HEPA grade filters. And based on the marketing material, it would suggest that this device, similar to the Philips 3000i, does use a non HEPA grade filter. And this is not such a bad thing for a device because it means it will get more airflow. Now the one unique thing about this device is the filter itself doesn't have any carbon, which is something you rarely see, especially in cylindrical smaller devices. But there are benefits to this, as this will mean that the filter probably will last a lot longer than a filter that is bonded with charcoal, but it does mean that it won't be able to deal with odors and gases. So let's jump into the exciting part. How well did the Philips 800 series do in our performance test? Now we tested this device in the same 728 cubic feet test room that we've tested over 80 different air purifiers. And we used two purple air sensors to track how quickly this device can remove PM1, PM2.5 and PM10. And for this device, according to our Zen sensor, was able to remove all PM1 particles in 43 minutes. And this matches up with the KDOS score from the Energy Star website. Looking at the table above, performance was on par with many of the other budget devices we've tested, but it was beaten by the LEGO air purifier, which was quicker at removing PM1 particles. Whilst air cleaning performance is the most important thing when looking for an air purifier, it's not the only thing, which is why we record the level of sound for each device running at each fan speed. Be aware that the background noise level in our location is very similar to what we get when running it on sleep mode. 
So it's likely that this is much quieter if you were able to test it in a silent room. But please have a listen for yourself. At its highest fan speed, the Philips 800 series is one of the quietest HEPA retail devices we've looked at. As part of our reviews, we also look at the amount of energy that's used at each fan speed and standby. And here are the results for the Philips 800 series. Considering the KDAR of this device, we can assume it has a very efficient fan motor with these energy levels. Now, if you were to run this device 24 seven at its high speed every day of the year, it would add an additional $21 to your energy bill. Looking at the table above, this device has a similar efficiency to the Lavoie Core 300 but it still managed to have the lowest energy usage of all the budget air purifiers we've tested. Like any air purifier, the filters for the Philips 800 series will need replacing eventually. Now, according to Philips, you only need to change the filters for this device every 12 months. And the OEM filters cost $29.99 or 23 pounds. When accounting for energy costs and filter replacements, the Philips 800 series will add an additional $51 and we can compare this to other devices we've looked at. The Philips 800S has some of the lowest running costs of any of the budget devices we've looked at. And this is because it has a low energy usage, but also Philips says that you only have to change the filters for this device every 12 months. And most of the time we see with smaller devices like this that they recommend changing the filters every six months. Now, one of the reasons why Philips says you don't have to change the filters so often with this device is because it doesn't have any carbon. Now you can get generic filters for this device in the UK, but I didn't see many available in the US. And this would bring down the filter cost to around 15 pounds per filter. One thing I was disappointed to find out was that the 800i, the Wi-Fi version of this device, has carbon in its filters, but you can't use these filters in this device, according to Philips. So is the Philips 800 series worth it? Well, I might sound like a broken record, but if you can, please try and get a bigger device. But I know there's a ton of people out there who just want a smaller device. So if is, that is the case, then the Philips 800 series might be worth it. Now, it does compare to something like the Lavoie Core 300S, which does give you an additional app support, but is a much higher cost to buy initially. You can get better performance with something like the WinX A230 or Compact Zero in the UK, but it will cost you more as this has higher energy usage and the filters will need replacing more often than this device. Its lack of carbon filter might be an issue for some people, but I did see that there were generic filters out there that do contain a small amount of carbon and they will fit this device. It also doesn't have app support. So if you want app support, you will need to upgrade to the 800i, which looking at prices isn't that big a leap. However, the challenge with that device, I saw that the OEM filters weren't easily available either on Philips or the Amazon website. And according to Philips, you can't use the filters for this device. So you may be stuck with not being able to get filters. I do have plans to get a hold of the Philips 800i and review and test it, especially seeing if the filters for this device work in that device and vice versa. Now, if you found this review helpful and you want to support the channel, please use the affiliate links in the description. And if you have any questions, as always, let me know in the comments and I'll see you all in the next video.